It's been over two months since I've done an update video. I know, I've been slacking, but over the next couple days, I got a few videos coming out that will catch you all up. In this first video, we're gonna do some just general overall product updates. We're gonna talk about the Mac app being launched on March 10th, two weeks later, the iPhone launch, which was a big surprise. I'll give you some feature and product updates, and then we'll wrap up the video showing you the updated website and new App Store screenshots. Okay, so the Mac and the iPhone are now launched officially on the App Store. This uh, was a big surprise that they came together so quickly, and I gotta take my hat off to SwiftUI. Uh, without SwiftUI, you know, if I was in UI Kit and App Kit, this speed would not have been possible. My original timeline was to get the Mac app out by the end of April, and it launched on March 10th, so way ahead of schedule. And the overall process from the time I started, like, hey, what's it look like on the Mac, to actually getting on the App Store, took about two weeks. Like I said, very fast, and hat tip to SwiftUI. And I was so pumped that this came together so quickly that I was like, well, hell, let me, let me give the iPhone a shot, see what that's like. And again, that took about two weeks from the time I said that, let's give the iPhone a shot, to we're on the iPhone App Store. Like crazy, crazy, crazy fast. Now I attribute a lot of the iPhone speed, if you will, of course, SwiftUI, like I said, but a lot of the heavy lifting was already done when I built the Mac app. Let me explain what I mean by heavy lifting, is uh, when building the Mac app for a separate target, and I had to make 1000% clear separation of concerns from all my business logic, all my view models, to the view themselves. Now I know all you developers out there are saying like, yeah, that's how you're supposed to build stuff. Of course, but we all know when you're building for one platform, Sometimes you get a little lazy, maybe some things are, are coupled and some things slip through the cracks here or there that aren't fully separated. Uh, but when you do you know, a separate platform Mac, it forces you, like I said, nothing can slip, just 100% separated between the business logic and the views. So once all that heavy lifting was done and the project organization and all the folders and the target management, I had to do all that for the Mac. So the iPhone, with all that being done, was really just a UI problem. And I have a whole separate video next about the iPhone process, so I'll leave it there. Stay tuned for the next one if you're curious about the details on how the iPhone went down. But what I wanted to convey here is just, again, the speed. Like I said, my original roadmap was Mac app by the end of April, and then iPhone app maybe in the fall or by the end of the year. Like the iPhone wasn't even like a thought, right? Uh, it was just because the Mac app went so smoothly that I was like, hell, let me give it a try. But, so again, I went from that timeline, Mac app end of April, iPhone at the end of the year, to both of them being on the App Store by the end of March. Like, insanely ahead of schedule. I was so pumped. And again, that's SwiftUI. Like, I was a huge SwiftUI fan before, but now that I've had this experience on building a product for the iPad, the Mac, and the iPhone, and all native, and all in the same code base, like, I, I mean, it's, it's game over. I mean, uh, let me just, of course, I'm gonna get comments for that one. Let me clarify what I mean. It's game over if you're building a brand new product in mid 2022 uh, and can support iOS 15. Like eh, there's no re I mean, there's always gonna be an edge case reason. I shouldn't say there's no reason, but the vast, vast majority of apps should go all in SwiftUI. Again, if they're a brand new product supporting iOS 15. Of course, if you're a legacy product, you have legacy code, totally different story. But new product, I, all in on SwiftUI. Like I'm, I'm sold. This was a great experience. I'll talk a little bit more about this in the iPhone video, but I wanna to touch on it real quick because as the iPhone app was coming together and I was like actually playing with it like on my phone and like feeling it, I started to think like, wow, this might be like the main way people use Creator View. And that has to do with just the install base of the iPhone, right? Compare the install base of an iPhone to iPad or Mac, night and day difference, right? Because I didn't think the iPhone would be fully functional. My initial vision for it was just like a companion app and that's because the initial product was designed for big Mac screens and big iPads. It wasn't really designed for this narrow you know, portrait form factor. But I, it's fully functional, <laughs> to, to give you the, the you know, punchline here. So it's just funny, this is, what, this is the message I wanna put across in this kind of vlog, is it's funny that a lot of times when you're building a product, the afterthought version of the product or the afterthought feature or whatever often becomes the main thing. So I guess the, the message here is like, in this game, you gotta be flexible. You gotta be able to go with the flow. Now, I don't have any download numbers to support is the iPhone the main thing. It's just intuitively, again, me being the user of the product, right? I'm building this product for myself, essentially. As I was using it, I was like, I think I would use this more than the, the iPad and the iPhone, or iPad and the Mac. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out, but I thought that was an interesting uh, thing that happened as I was building the iPhone app. 
Okay, let's shift to talking about some basic feature updates and just you know giving you an update on how things are going. So the first thing I wanna talk about was I made the schedule free. I've gone back and forth on this, like it was free, then I put it behind the paywall, now I made it free again. And the reason I did this was because my co-founder, well, again, I was going back and forth on the decision, but what sealed the deal was my co-founder sent me a screenshot of him using the calendar like for his personal stuff, right? Because you know you can color code stuff on the calendar, and you know, I would see like on this day is creator view, on this day so and so is coming into town, this day I gotta do work for my main job. And again, the point of the creator view calendar, the whole thing I wanted wasn't like, you know, I didn't want I'm here at 11.30, then here at 2.30 I'm this, and then here's a link to the video call, and who's just, like, I didn't care about all that. I wanted big picture, on this day I'm doing like this one or two things, cool. On this day I'm doing one or two things, and I could drag it around easily. So almost like a big picture calendar, not a detailed calendar. And I really like the calendar I built. A lot of people compliment it, and seeing him use it, you know, he got complimented as well. He's like, I love this calendar. Of course, he's probably biased, right? He's working on it, he likes the product, um, but, Seeing him do that, I was like, okay, I need, to, I need to make this calendar free, make it the killer feature, and then do the typical SaaS software as a service model, right? Where you give some portion of it away for free, that gets a lot of users, and then you, know, you try to upsell those users, convert a percentage of them to the paid plan. So now the idea is to have the schedule free and then make that like a killer feature and uh, go from there. So how are we making it the killer feature? Well, it's got a long way to go, uh, but some initial improvements we made is, as you can see here, we added a checklist to videos, so you can kind of keep track of your videos as you're progressing through them, scripted, outlined, filmed, uploaded, et cetera. And you can see, at least on the Mac and the iPad versions, you get a little like, you know, two of six indicator or two of five indicator, uh, whatever, on the video on the calendar. Another thing I added was uh, selecting a video type and this video type will color code uh, the video. So you can see the four types, just a regular video, live stream, podcast, YouTube short. You'll notice that's very like YouTube centric. Those are the four common types of videos on YouTube. You can see how this could expand, Instagram post, blog post, whatever, uh, TikTok. Uh, but for now, we're keeping it YouTube focused, but this does have room to expand. And then finally, on the scheduler, we added the uh, note editor, like where you can script your videos or make notes. We just made it like a full screen sheet, as you can see. And it used to be just this little like box at the bottom, which, you know, if you're scripting your whole video, not a lot of room. As you can see here, this is just basically a text editor, SwiftUI text editor. Eventually, uh, we want to add features like, you know, bold, italic, outlines, you know, maybe support markdown. Eventually I want this to be a serviceable text editor. I'm not trying to build the end all be all text editor here, but it should have some basic features. So those will come in time. And then finally, I moved the data visualizations uh, out from the income tab into its own tab called data visualizations. It's completely separate. And then I made like a little directory of it rather than, it used to be a scroll view where you would just scroll through your, your pie chart, your bar chart and your line chart. Um, but as you can imagine, if there's gonna be 20 visualizations, that's just a super long scroll thing, that's annoying. That scroll view was always temporary. So now we have this kind of directory type view. And like I said, I expect the visualizations to expand to 20 or 30. The idea here is to be highly opinionated because you can imagine, right? If you're thinking like, wh why wouldn't you just let the user, hey, here's my date range. Here's the data I want to see. Maybe it's like views or income stream or whatever and, and show it to me in a line chart and compare it with this other data stream. You know what I mean? You can let the user customize what they want to see. But if you've built software, you know, when you go down that path, opening up crazy customizations, like it's just, you open yourself up to a ton of edge cases. You, you kind of open up Pandora's box, if you will. And at this point in time, where we're at with Creator View, I didn't want to do that. Um, it was a lot of work. I felt just being highly opinionated, showing 20 uh, data visualizations, one that I think are important as the user of the product, but also I will gather feedback from users, uh, you know, how they run their business, what data they think is important, and build that out from there. I think that'll be fine. And I guess the fallback, if that doesn't end up being fine, is go the custom route. It's a bit of a heavy lift, but you know, that's always, it's always a backup plan. So that's it for the new features, which is kind of light you know, for the past two months. But again, the focus was on getting the Mac app and the iPhone app on the App Store, which a huge success. Again, by the end of March, it was on all three platforms. Let's finish up the video giving an update on the website and the App Store screenshots. And there's gonna be a theme here. I'll just give you the theme right away. So just iterations, right? That's kind of what the lesson I wanna talk about. You know, the first iteration of the website was, it just needs to exist. Let's get something up there that I can point people to that tells them about the product, right? So first version wasn't that great, but now this is the second iteration. And the big difference with the second iteration is being able to show like the Mac, the iPad, the iPhone version of the feature, right? All right there. I think that's 
That's what I wanted to get to very quickly, as soon as possible. I think that's a big selling point when you can have your data sync across all devices. Like, at least for me, that's always a huge selling point when I download an app, right? Because I'm deep into the Apple ecosystem. I'm just looking at my iPad and my iPhone right here. So that's huge to me. So I wanted to get that as soon as possible. So that was basically the second iteration uh, of the website. Now onto the screenshots, again, the same theme. First iteration was just get something up there. And as you can see, they were, they were quite ugly. You know, to be honest, I had forgotten all about App Store screenshots and the hustle and bustle of launching, you know, the iPad version. Uh, we were getting ready to submit to the App Store and I was like, oh, I haven't done any App Store screenshots. So those were put together in like an hour. Uh, that's why they look so ugly. The second iteration, uh, again, first iteration, it just needs to exist. Let's get something up there. Second iteration, all right, I spent some time, spent like a whole day on the design, you know, researching on Dribbble, other App Store screenshots, you know, taking what I liked and coming up with these designs, um, which I think look, clean, professional, um, that's the second iteration. So I think these look a lot better. Now, you know, third and fourth iteration of both the App Store screenshots and the website, you know, I'll probably bring in the big guns. I'll probably hire a designer to make them look professional, amazing, because you know, both the website and the App Store screenshots are, are my designs. And I think I'm okay at designs, but you know, if Creator View is gonna be this, this big, big product, you know, uh, once I start making some money with this thing, I'll, I'll bring in some designers to, you know, make that third and fourth iteration that are amazing, hopefully. So that's the overall like update of the product, how it's evolved over the past two months since you saw your last update. Again, I got a bunch of videos coming out over the next couple days. There's a whole lot of other stuff that's been going on, uh, but we'll dive into that then.